Hey guys, Tara here. Welcome back to the episode of GTA Line Racing. This time, and back to a normality now. Some, you know, all the uh, the past races, hopefully now put behind for a bit. All those terrible tracks and uh, just everything else that went wrong as well. So this race in the Trismo Classic, starting towards the back. We know actually used Trismo Classics for a while, so it, it makes a nice change. Actually, uh, use this car once again. Give a bit of a slide there through turn one. They actually get a pretty okay line out of that. So. Uh, once again, you're getting what I call a positive slide, where you slide, it slows you down a little bit, but you, the, the net gain of positions makes it really not matter all that much. You're actually now into P4, so a few of the cars are having issues getting to the corner here, running out very, very wide, of course. This is the first time I've ever done this track, so the first lap, it was all just going to be about learning where I'm going. And again, for these curbs to straight on, which that car behind us isn't, and that really just shows the difference in speed with curb boosting compared to not curb boosting. But it's still getting pretty close to the hairpin, so... Uh, don't call that car out yet for maybe making another appearance at some point again before the end of this race. Well, let me wonder. Actually, it's still that car behind us. This is looking pretty good. And through this next, I find the car. behind the curb, that's not really done any favours. And actually, that's a really tight corner there. They definitely need to uh, work on my line through there on the, the coming laps. And now that cheater, which I just said, actually gets past us now. Like I said, don't count them out because now they're in front of us again. Once again, just avoid the water. So you can carry a little bit more speed. There's definitely a better line that you can take through that corner. And then to lap two, four. It's only just about a minute or so lap. So. Definitely a quick final okay, that's, that's that's way out wide. Actually, you can get away with it though, you can carry the speed when you come back on the track, so that's something to remember for the, uh, the the next lap. So you can run out wide there. It doesn't feel like the best line in the world, but it, it seems to be work out pretty okay. And three is next. Right hand once again taking a much better line this time. And once again getting straight on the curb is now for what is probably the, the back straight of this track. Getting a little bit though on the kind front. So they're getting a little bit better over the curb boosting things than what they are now into the hairpin getting a nice high side there under braking and definitely a much better apex that time. And we're getting quite a bit now on this black Trismo Trismo Classic and then there's another Trismo So there's quite a few Trismos in this race. And again, that is on paper the best car, although the uh, Cheetah Classic isn't really all too much different. Getting a bit of a wiggle on those through this corner. And through this next right hand, again, much better line there. Hits the apex beautifully, actually. Well, kind of more driving over the apex, but uh, you can get away with that in a GTA race. And around the final corner now. Once again, taking an okay line, not using all the track available to us. As we come now onto a lap three or four, so over, over the halfway stage of the race, we're once again running out a bit wider through the first corner because you can get away with it, carry the speed forth up towards you, uh, rejoin the circuit. Though we're in a little bit of a no man's land now. So then, of course, avoiding the the, uh, the slowdown pad if you just want to completely straight on the circuit, which you definitely can't get away with. Running out a little bit wider, get constantly dropping, running to the wall, they get away with it, they would bounce off it, so that's going to cost us a little bit of time, a bit of momentum, but. That could have been a lot worse because the, uh, the green stuff there, I don't know what it's meant to be made of, but it has absolutely no grip whatsoever once you get out wide onto it. And into the hairpin we get a nice line once again back on the inside of that black trim where they get a slightly better exit, although we have the effective inside line, but again, then again it's a non-contact race, so I can just drive straight through them if I wanted to. We get back up now, into people get a little bit wide on this one, get a bit more adventurous now. With that line, they're still going onto that stuff under brake, so it's not going to be the best line in the world, and then we just tap the wall out a little bit, so... Trying to push the limits now off the track quite a little bit. It's only ever, okay, they're a little bit laggy, but uh, I'm actually glad it's a non-contact race because I don't really want to overtake a lag boy now. Just cut out onto the final lap now of the race, get a little bit side there through turn one. So again, we can go for a kind of like cheat line and track extend. But again, there's no track limit warnings, it's a GTA race. The whole point is to get all the checkpoints as quickly as possible. And let's still have that black trim to pull away from us a little bit now. So we try and look for a way around the outside once again, taking a better line that time, definitely staying off the stuff, this grey stuff here so we don't hit into that wall. And again for the curbs now, we're gaining time on them. So it looks like we got a little bit better over the curbs than what they did. And into the hairpin now we get a nice line there. Now uh, uh, the battle's still for people getting a little bit slightly over the curbing. And we can find a line there around the outside line, so we just double left handed to try and hang it out wide, they carry the mental through, which we did actually get up now into P3. When did we get onto the podium? When did this become the fight for a podium position? And through this chicane, we've got the first part nice through the second part perfectly, absolutely spot on there. Now the leader's already finished because no way we're changing the leaders. And now we're trying to carry the speed now, we're running out a little bit wide. And we're into the wall and we completely bowled it out on the final lap of the race. And we're getting a launch there over the top of that jump thing. And then coming up now, two finish down now into P5. And so finish is going to be a P6 finish. And that's, that's how you not finish a race. That is completely how you do a 100% Bottleberg. I claim that there was a gust of wind, that's why I'm blaming for that. But now then, on to uh, the main race of the video in the uh, the Yosemite. So, you know, it's only going to go well because this thing is twitchy as hell under any kind of accelerating, braking, cornering, actually anything you try to do. This thing will try and do a complete 360. 
We've still got a few cliques there as well, and those things are pretty nightmarish to control over the curbing. Although we're going now into the lead of the race, into this first hairpin now, trying to get nice under the braking because he's 70 doesn't have the best brakes in the world. Oh, there's a straight drop out there over the other side. Definitely need to get my braking right to avoid that. Um, Statue leads making a little bit of a slide, like I said, the assembly wants to slide all over the place. And one of the clicks makes me move all the inside line in this corner. Oh, wow, it's a very, very nasty corner there. Tied up so much, that's something I need to remember. That was a horrible corner. Very, uh, not driver friendly, anyway. And that's allowed one of the clicks to pull away. Though the clicks do have some of the advanced handling flags, but not the ones where they slow down over the bumps, the ones where they literally become springs and just bounce all over the place. So literally, there's like curbs of hydraulics to them. Where they just bounce all over the place. We're going on a track like this. That's made of just like all stunt pieces and that. I don't think it's going to be too uncontrollable if you stay away from the actual the curves. There. Oh my! What is that speed? So like I said, there, the click. It's a good car if you can control it. And on this kind of track, is honestly a track where it is controllable down to lap two or five. So it's quite a long race this time. So it's longer than lap time. Mine has a lot of getting a little bit of a slide though. Imagine to uh, correct it though. As come now into the first hairpin, got a uh, dummy race car there on the inside line, which is probably one of my least favourite cars to drive in the game, hence why I don't have one. Now into the second hairpin, get a nice apex there. Not using as much of the, the exit road available to us there, like this uh, green clique did behind us. Uh, this is all just, all just battling though, it'll be a non-contact race. I'm going to hit to the wall once again, that horrible corner. Though we also focus really on trying to uh, better each other, just allowing the, uh, the purple one in the lead to get away quite a bit. See them just pulling and stretching the distance. We still see them though, crucially. Which is, uh, well, it's okay at least for now. But then again, it's never over to cross the finish line. Any of us could still end up winning this race yet. Again, another side of the SMT being the SMT just sliding for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And that's going to allow the, uh, the the green clique there to make a move on us. Now here comes a dummy race car, which is going to be faster than us in Australian speed because of the usable muscle cars. I'm pretty sure that, the, that one's still king for straight line speed. We're going a bit wide there. Not the best line in the world coming up to the finish line now for lap 3 if I so now onto the halfway stage lap now of this race you try and get a better line through here this time which we do that's much better now coming up now to the penetration into P3 what's happened there to uh, someone else okay, the, the lead has clearly bowled it now yeah, into the wall there or something don't really know what happened to them now but now then we were ahead of these two cars if it wasn't for that slide so it's now a battle for the lead now three different cars the Yosemite for me, the dummy race car for this one, which is making a move up the inside again, a little bit slightly, we avoid the wall, but then again, didn't really end up going too much better for us, in all honesty. And now then, it's the other clique now, which is leading the race, and now pulling away quite a bit as me and this dummy race car going to battle now over second place. And we're going now over the curb because the advantage with the Yosemite is traction, and through these corners here, well, uh, the corner regulars, and that is where we're going to be getting a little bit, but now this part of the lap is uh, definitely not going to favour us. We still have to go, we have to go for all the cabbies that we can. We put it from now all that dummy for for the time being. Although the shroud speed of it is going to kick in fairly soon. There's going to be a drivers now down over the start finish line now. We start lap four or five now. Here, here comes the shroud speed. Other dummy race car pulling himself back in front. We're just about now to come to a corner. You get a nice apex there for the first corner now. Kids, they're trying to get a little bit of a slide there over the curb, but the dummy did the exact same thing. Now to the first hairpin, get a really nice hairpin there, which nailing it on a corner entry. Now into the, uh, the straight drop one, we get a pretty kind of missy hairpin a little bit, but still here better than what the uh, the dummy did, so that's all that matters. Now coming now into the, the horrible part now around this corner, going very, very slowly this time. We're getting a little bit of a power slide still, so we tapped the wall, but that's definitely the best we've actually got around that corner all race so far. And then you prove around that corner. That's why we lose most of the time on this lap, I feel. Although the the green clique is now just pulling away into the distance. So uh, unless they do whatever the uh, the purple one did, they may actually have this win in the bag now because it's, it's starting to get a little bit spread out now. So we have pulled a gap though. Actually, there's a car there in front of us. Has the green car made a mistake? Although the car in front of us here doesn't actually look very green. But I don't think they're going to be lapping people, surely, in a five lap race. Although, yeah, we're going to be lapping someone. That's a dummy race car going very slowly. We just literally goes straight through them, so this is a non-contact race. And now they're coming up now to the finish line now, they're going to start the final lap now on this race, lap 5 of 5. And Crucial, they've kept it ahead though of the uh, the dummy that we're racing through the part where it has the advantage, so surely now we can just try and hold it for this final lap. And we should be coming home in at least second place. The win is not out of the question until they cross the finish line, they could do a bottle of both, like me from the last race, although, albeit not from third place from the lead, which would be even worse for them. And the clique, if it, it loses it over bumps, that's something you can't control. Running a bit while anything into the wall, it's completely, uh, completely bottling it there. But thankfully, though, thanks to the uh, the lack of damage, 
with a GTA physics, we managed to get away with that. Imagine if we had something like beam G drive damage or a breakfast damage, that would be honestly a lot better, I prefer that. Maybe, honestly, I wish we had story mode damage in GTA where wheels can get locked up and that, so uh, yeah, so definitely you would increase the driver's skill gap at least, so the better ones actually end up winning the races more often than not. We've still got a bit of a gap though over that dummy behind us. And we're coming up now, not long to go now to the finish line, so hopefully now there's enough straight line speed in these assemblies need to keep it as the, uh, the green clique takes the victory. We're coming up to the finish line, we're going to hold on though, two second place, quite a hard four second place, but honestly I think we could have won that race since I was ahead of that clique for the first two and a bit laps I think it was, so the pace I think was there to take the victory, but uh, didn't quite have the, the outright consistency to go with it. So it would be a Hatage in the clique that takes the victory. We're in second place, or, or actually our fastest lap was a second and a half slower than theirs, so uh, yeah. Not the best pace in the world from us, but we do beat the uh, the Dommy, because only third and Rambo in the clique in fourth comes home with the fastest lap as well, so uh, cliques do reign supreme, but uh, had a fastest lap, but he was way behind us, so uh, the consistency for him wasn't really there either. And then this guy in last place, pretty much giving up at this point, now he's DNF anyway, so uh, no screenshot though, we've got the phones coming out of the exhaust, so a nicely timed for that, I will say at least. So if you enjoyed uh, these races, remember to leave a like on this video, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you're new, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Remember to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, there'll be links down below in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.